Hi, HR Nation. It's Chris Rainey. Welcome to HR Leaders, the show where we interview today's most successful and innovative HR practitioners five days a week. Um, today, we have a special guest. We're joined by Alan McLennigan. Uh, Alan is the CEO at Sageglass. Um, Alan, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, Chris. I'm doing really well today. Thank you. How are you? I'm really good. I'm really good. I'm excited to be speaking to you. Uh, we've spoken some time now, so really happy to have you on the show. Um, Alan, fill in the gaps. Tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and yeah. your journey to, to where we are today. Okay. Well, well, at the moment, at this stage in my life, I'm the CEO of Sage Glass, which is an innovative part of Sango Band's glass division. And very simply, this product is something that uh, with a switch on a wall or an app or a sensory system, your glass can be tinted so that you don't need blinds and shades. So I'm CEO of this, what I consider the most innovative development in the glass industry you know, for quite some time. Um, my path is, you know, originally I was a physicist. I, I studied physics and chemistry at university, did a PhD in materials, started out in research for a chemical company that sadly no longer exists called ICI. It was huge at the time. And um, I thought as I left college, I would always be in science and research in some way. But throughout my career, others saw something in me, uh, moved me into manufacturing. I got a bit of a bug for seeing how things get made. You know, I got excited about seeing products in, in reality rather than just concepts in a lab. And I then spent a lot of my time in manufacturing, built some plants with DuPont and with ICI, um, and then joined Sangoban about 18 or 19 years ago now wow. to head up um, the UK glass division. Uh, and I remember saying to my, uh, well, who would become my, my manager, I said, well, I don't know why you're talking to me. I don't know anything about glass. And he said, well, fortunately, you know, we're nearly 350 years old. We know enough about glass. What we need to know is about running factories in the UK at the time. So I joined saint and uh, never, never necessarily thinking I'd still be here, you know, almost 20 years on. But it's offered me so many great challenges, so many great opportunities, um, so many countries to work in, amazing cultures to work with. And, uh, and I've been in a few divisions of the company, but always focused on, on glass in one way, shape or form. And then we, uh, we've been working on this technology for Sage Glass for over 25 years. And so had the company called Sage, very small startup in the United States. And about uh, seven years ago, we acquired them, combined our two intellectual property portfolios to create this company that now had a very robust, uh, durable product that could go out onto buildings, um, as opposed to something which was perhaps very cool, but uh, you know couldn't survive for 10 or 20 years. Yeah. Um, so here I am, you know, a torturous path uh, to become the, to be in a, a very privileged position to lead Sage Glass uh, and bring this amazing product to a wider audience. Amazing. I think the leap in innovation that the glass industry has seen, as you said, is it's for so long, as you said, it's been the same. <laughs> There's no, been no real innovations, right? And in, in, the, in the past few years, especially with your own organization, that's taken a giant leap forward. So it must be yeah. very exciting times. I think uh, most people don't see the innovations that have been brought in the glass industry, you know, because the glass is still glass. It doesn't do anything, you know, but a yeah. lot of work that's been done. Um, on, on coatings is, is invisible, quite frankly, yeah. you know, glass, which doesn't, doesn't feel as cold anymore, doesn't let so much heat out, you know, maybe it's low maintenance or self-cleaning, you know, we don't realize why it's anti-reflective, all that work's been done, but people just look at a window and think it looks the same, so yeah. we don't think anything's happening. But when it changes, you know, when you see it uh, with the control from an app that it's getting darker and you're controlling it, then they think, wow, you know, yeah. the first reaction we always get when you show, show someone the sample is wow. It, you know, it's a universal word that comes out of their mouth, mainly followed by how much is it? Well, <laughs> yeah, it's always. Another, another <laughs> question entirely. But um, it, yeah. it, does, it does kind of push the glass industry into an innovative sector, brings, it, brings new challenges because you know, we have to move uh, a lot faster with our developments and our changes um, we, we have to move at the speed, perhaps, of an electronics manufacturer now, rather than the speed of a glass manufacturer. And of course, now 
the glass is one thing with its technology, but we have to advance with controls technology. Yeah, well. IoT comes into play yeah. now, and, you, and that's the way you've got to keep up, right? Making Absolutely. sure that you're, comp you're compatible with all of the new. I, I can't wait to have it in my house, you know, with my home, with my system, you know, connected with everything in my, my, my connected homes are the future. Yes. I mean, you guys are going to be, play a big part in that. So I think dynamic glass is going to play a big part. I think one of the challenges for me is to make sure that Sage just doesn't have footnote in history as being the first. No. I want to be <laughs> yeah. the best and the biggest and the fastest growing and the most innovative. <laughs> you know, being the first is quickly forgotten um, yeah. and we can't, uh, we can't stop there. Perfect. Well, um, we can talk about that all day. So let's move on to, <laughs> otherwise we're going to get too carried away. So one of the reasons I reached out to you first, as you know, is I was really excited to get your perspective on, on HR. As you know, our, our audience are senior HR leaders from, from, from global brands. And it was really important to get a CEO perspective. So just to kick things off, what do you look for from your, from your, from your own HR function as a CEO? Yeah. Well, first of all, it's a great honor. I mean, we, Sage Glass is a very small company, um, albeit part of a very large company like Sangoban. So it's an honor to speak to, to you, know, you and your team and the, the audience that you're normally communicating with. Um, I don't really think of myself as a CEO. I think the day I wake up and think I'm a CEO is the day I should no longer be a CEO. And maybe there's a little bit of you know, philosophy and mindset in there. I'm, I'm not a fan of people who believe uh, uh, that their own voice is more important than others. So I'll, I'll state that from, from the outset. My number two on my senior leadership team is the vice president of HR. Um, and it's not an accident that I've selected him. Uh, culturally, we're a company which is breaking a paradigm and changing the way people think about glass, what it can do. You know, normally people just don't think about glass. Even when you buy something which is very emotive, like a car or a home, no one's stopping to say, I wonder what glass type is in the vehicle or in my building. <laughs> no. um, so we're changing something. We're making it something more emotional. We're connecting you to the glass and you're going to interact with it now. You're going to you know, use your app on your phone or your sensory system or, as you say, the, your, your connected home um, network um, to make that glass function for you. So we, we're going to grow at such rapid rates, and I can talk about that later on, that HR is an important function in bringing the right people in, setting the right tone, balancing our diversity. Um, you know, I'm maybe launching too fast, but one of the things I'm very proud of is when I took over at Sage, we're a tech company, and we were about 7% female. We are now nearly 30% female five years later. And that's not because we've gone out and said, oh, let's hire lots of, of, of women. It's because we've gone out and said, let's make sure we get the best people for the job and let's make sure this is an industry and a company and a place to work or a series of places to work where women say, you know, I like the idea of working there. I, I think the values are there, the, the principles are there, um, and we've been able to do it that way. So when I come back to, you know, why is HR so important? We knew that we were going to be growing at 200 to 400% per annum on our sales volumes. Therefore, we needed HR to be able to keep pace and actually stay slightly ahead in recruiting the right people, whether they be salespeople in Europe or India or North America in our targeted countries, or whether they be you know, technical specialists in the R&D team to make sure the next generation of the product keeps coming. HR was going to be critical. And we had a culture change to create as well. Um, Sage was a very um, R&D centric environment. Um, and I don't, I say this, we, we needed scientists with a touch of arrogance um, to achieve what they did. They always are the most creative and amazing ones are the ones that are yeah, arrogant and you've crazy. Got to, <laughs> you've got to be able to say, if you want everybody who conforms perfectly then to- There's no innovation. It's not gonna work. You've no. got to embrace this uh, kind of culture. But at the same time, we needed to migrate towards a company that also manufactured robustly and worked to very high quality standards. And as you go from 20 people to 100 people to 300 people, you've got to then realize there's going to be more interactions, more need for management skills, more need for clarity of direction, and a greater reliance on the values of the company. It becomes too big to talk to everybody every day. Yeah. So you need to have common values, clearly communicated, clearly bought into. So when we're 
hiring people, we're testing them on their technical capabilities or their experience. We also want to test them on their values. Why do they want to work here? Why do they want to behave in a particular way? What type of people do they want to interact with? How are they going to go about that interaction? Um, so values become critical and HR set the tone with the CEO uh, for those values. Amazing. So that's, that's how valuable I see HR. Um, it's been critical to the growth of this business and it will remain critical um, as we continue to grow. It's not just about recruiting but as we continue to grow and develop our people and develop our companies, that we foster an environment of continued innovation, but not forgetting that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how innovative you are, if you don't put the product in the box and get it to the customer on time, yeah. you're nothing. And you need those skills as well, and they're equally important. Fantastic. Well, thank you for sharing that and also providing the context behind it as well. It's, it's, it's amazing. So for you, when you were choosing your HR leader or recruiting the, the leadership team, what, what is it that you looked for uh, from your HR um, vice president as a leader? Yeah. You know, um, actually, it wasn't until you asked me this question or you told me you would be asking this. <laughs> I really thought, what was my process? You know, I'm not going to lie to you. So I had this amazing process and I outlined exactly what <laughs> no I was one does. Doing. No one does. Um, so it actually made me stop and think about it. And, you know, I, I had certainly gone through, here's the experiences I'd like them to have had. Here's the way of thinking I'd like them to have. Here's the way they prepare for the interviews and the series of interviews with our people. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we hired our current HR leader internally, but we had looked externally as well. Um, so we, we, you know, we did the basics of take the interview video so that we could really see a wide cross section of people. Um, but the, the main difference is that when they finally came in, even the internal ones, uh, they were interviewed by a wide spectrum of people and that phased a few of them. When they were put into a room with two members of the operating team, some of them felt like, well, why are you into Why am I here? Why, yeah, why am I? And that was the test. You know, the interview was done. Yeah. If you didn't think it made any sense to have people from a wide cross section of our business you know, test you out, you are not the right person for this company. Yeah, it's a great, so, that's a great, did you do that, was that, was that, was that a conscious decision you made beforehand then? Did oh you, yeah, that yeah, part was definitely, was part. We, we try, for every role, we try and get a wide cross section of people uh, to meet to meet you. And sometimes it, it will face people the other way, you know, they're, they're maybe hiring for a supervisor's job and they find that, that they're meeting the CEO. And it's like, oh my God, you know, and <laughs> wait a second, you know, when I, when I need a restroom break, I'm going to go to the same restroom as you. I'm not any different. Uh, don't read too much into this, but your role's important in the company. And uh, this is one that, um, you know, I've been asked to, to participate in. But, you know, when you asked me the question, three words kept coming out to me and it made me realize that's what I'm looking for, both in hiring the person and in how they behave. Delivering results. It's the same in every senior leader. You've got to deliver through others. Um, so a, a track record of delivery and a constant reference on their part to I'm here to deliver. You know, my simple analogy of there's no point in being innovative if we don't put it in a box and get it to a customer. We need to deliver. Um, and HR is the same. If we're going to you know, do a management training seminars uh, for a certain group of people, they need to be executed. They need to be delivered. Um, simple things like, you know, if we're going to pay people every two weeks, we need to deliver on it. So people are focused on delivering and, and holding themselves accountable and holding their team accountable. The next one's probably the most important one and it applies to all leaders. And, and you know, many people might differ on this, but I'm very strong on this and it's integrity. You, people need to look at you and know that you're walking the talk that you're not asking them to do things that you yourself would not be willing to do, that there's not a set of rules that apply to them that don't apply to you, um, that you treat people with respect and fairness, and it's in the heart of what you do. Our, our value statement starts with people come first. Um, and I'm a real believer, I tell customers this, that they don't come first. My people come first, and the way we treat them, the way we treat each other, the way I'm treated by them, is the most important thing because then we will treat everybody else that we interact with better because we feel valued. 
we have a statement here about safety which applies beyond safety. Nothing is so important that we cannot take the time to do it safely. And I've had quite a few people visit the plant and say, but it's obvious, isn't it? Yeah, it's obvious till you stop and think about it. Until you actually challenge yourself to say, what does it mean? And to someone joining the company or someone in the company, it means that they are important. It means that the product's not more important than them or meeting a target's not more important than them. It puts it in, into words. So this integrity is the second one. And then the final one is credibility. And that's why we set people in front of a wide cross section of people. When I'm uh, the lead person on, an, on a hire, and I'm not always that, um, I will ask one question to everyone at the end so that we don't waste any time. And the question is simple. Did you find the candidate credible or not? And if we get you know, one or two no's, we don't even ask them why. Mm -hmm. We just say, okay, that's it. Um, if you can't immediately say, yeah, I thought they were really credible, and then start to eulogize about them, then they're not the right person for the job. Whether that job is as you know, one of our operators in our warehouse, or whether it's as a new vice president of architectural solutions, they've got to be credible in what they're, they're doing. And HR must epitomize this. The CEO and the HR department must epitomize this for everyone else. So credibility, integrity, and delivery is what I'm looking for. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad I got you to think about it <laughs> in a bit more detail. And you didn't even charge me anything for thinking about it. Amazing. Or you didn't charge me for giving me the answers. <laughs> oh, the bottle's in the post. Oh, no. I haven't given you my address yet, so we're all right. <laughs> but um, yeah, very, very interesting um, to, to hear your perspective on that. And I, I like your process. And um, it's, I'm sure many people that are listening are gonna. It's gonna. It's when I when you whenever I ask a question on the show, the listeners ask themselves the same question. Yeah, right? good. And they start thinking about the same things. And there's yeah. so many people that I've um, spoken to that said, you "No, know Chris, after you asked me that question, I went away and I couldn't stop thinking about yeah. it myself." Because sometimes a question just sparks the, those. And that, and that's exactly what your question did for me. I thought I knew the answer, but all the all the tactical issues that an HR leader needs to address. But the more I started to write those down, the more I realized it's not been about this. I've actually been looking for other things and, and they are integrity, credibility and delivery. Amazing. Perfect. Well, in terms of the focus of HR, this is something which a lot of people are talking about now. Where should HR focus its attention? Um, how do you see the balance um, of where HR should focus? So if we talk about you know, running the HR function and, and delivering the HR agenda, contributing more broadly to running the business as a member of your leadership team, um, above and beyond the HR role, um, yeah. being your personal confidant um, in, in, in some cases, and then also facilitating the top leadership team. Where do you see the balance of priority there? Yeah, I think um, any HR must function must do the basics, but you know, no one's going to give it any credit for the basics. It's like getting up in the morning and breathing. Yeah. No one says, hey, well done. You can stop for the day now. Um, but if you don't do it, you're not going to achieve anything else. So the basics must be done. And, you know, I, I've certainly been in organizations, seen organizations where the basics were not being done well. You know, people were constantly having to go and check, why wasn't my pay right this week? Why wasn't this correct this week? And we should never take it for granted. It's a hard thing to do. Um, you know, we have a few people in our HR team who get those things right. And every couple of months, I'll just wander down to the HR offices or send them an email to the ones who are not based uh, here and, and thank them for getting the basics right because no one does. No one walks in and says, I really appreciate it. Well done for payroll. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. And why would you? Because then after, after you do it, you know, a few times it's like, oh my God, you know, he's not being sincere. But it's important that that gets done right. That You, you can't build uh, anything else if that foundation is not correct because you're just constantly reworking problems and issues. So having the right people there um, and owning that and then knowing the value of getting that foundation right is really important. Now, beyond that, when I start to look at the leader of HR, you know, the vice president of HR or a director, I'm looking for an awful lot more. I'm looking for someone who's running the business as a team. You know, so my senior leadership team we run the business. Um, so if they came in and reported on 100% of people got paid correctly this month, that's not a topic for the <laughs> team. Yeah. Uh, 
it sadly becomes the topic if they're not paid correctly. But um, so the partnership, when I mentioned at the outset, my number two is the HR vice president. And he's the HR vice president because of his credibility and his integrity and his skill set. And he, he is more than just HR. Every leader of a department in this company uh, needs to be more than the leader of that department. They are the leaders of the company and they must be seen that way. So when I come back to integrity, um, you know, I challenge my people and I challenge myself that we are seen with integrity, that our behavior uh, supports that. And everybody's definition of integrity can be different. I'm not saying we've got it right. Um, sometimes if we think we've treated two people very fairly, um, those two individuals may not think we've treated them very fairly, but, it, but we go through a process uh, of, of attempting to. Um, so they must be leaders and they must be willing to step out beyond HR and contribute to other business related problems. You know, so if we, are, if we are entering a new country, for example, and we're putting together the strategy for how we put a sales force in place in that country, how we put technical support in place, how we import uh, the product into the country, what's the long term strategy for maybe producing the product in that country, then obviously I want HR contributing incredibly. I can't have them sitting in the room saying, uh, someone's just waving at me. Uh, I can't have them just sitting at the room saying, well, whenever you're ready to recruit people, you know, give us a shout. <laughs> yes. that's, that's useless. Yeah. Um, so it's very important at the leadership level that they're business partners. Um, and you mentioned the word confidant. I, I wouldn't say that I necessarily select HR as a function as, you know, that's who, I, who will be my confidant. But in this structure, and when he sees this, uh, no doubt he'll, his, his head will swell a little bit. Um, <laughs> I go to my head of HR as, as one of the people that I say, look, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit confused on this. or I don't understand this, or I'm having to make a decision here and I'm, and I'm not convinced. Um, and they, they will give me a perspective because he as an individual has a lot of experience uh, in our business, in other businesses, in other roles. He's not a... HR professional as such, although he is a very professional HR person. I'm with you. <laughs> He's come through uh, an, another path. So that's what I want. You know, I want to be able to to have that you know, discussion. I, I want to be able to, you know, have the closed door discussion where I say, I, I'm absolutely furious that this has happened. <laughs> well, what are we, and, and he'll calm me down and we'll, we'll, we'll make a plan and, um, and that I can have that uh, that little vent every now and then because it's it, it's completely inappropriate for the CEO to sit in front of the entire organisation and have that vent. Um, that just scares everybody. It doesn't doesn't but, do a lot for your culture. That. Yeah, it doesn't, does it? But equally, I don't want people thinking that you know CEOs are some superhuman individual. True, that's true too. I'm glad you shared that. You know, that's just crazy. And, and, and I think any, any leader or CEO who wants their people to think that is, is, is on a fool's errand, quite frankly. Um, and I do think in, in more so in today's um, uh, culture within the workplace and, and what maybe perhaps I hate sweeping generalizations about generations, but, you know, let's say that the millennials uh, coming through, they, 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 they don't mind and in fact perhaps want to see uh, a certain element of humbleness in their leaders uh, and a certain element of uncertainty, um, but they want it to translate into eliminating that uncertainty by gathering information and, and making a decision based on that rather than just you know, sitting in isolation, not asking for, for input, help or support or perspectives and then perhaps making a wrong decision, but thinking, well, I'm the leader. I make the decisions. Yeah. You have to be authentic, right? Uh, sorry, Chris? You have to be authentic in this day and age. Yeah. You, you know, and, and, and geez, how do, you, how do you train anybody to be authentic? You either <laughs> are or you aren't. You are. You are. You are either trying to portray something else that you're not. Or mm -hmm. everyone's, everyone's human, right? Because I remember early in my career, it was like, oh, my God, that's the CEO. 
<laughs> when you no. was a when you was a salesperson and the CEO walked through the floor, the the culture from now to what it was, you know, fifteen ten years ago when I was working in a small office in London. You know, when the CEO walked in the room, it was like, <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> whereas and now it's like, oh, the CEO's in the room. They're approachable. They can have conversations. You know, how are you? Yeah. And it's just like you, you're just part. Everyone's on the same level, right? We're all doing different roles. We all, we all have our part to play. Absolutely. But there's, but there's no, you know, there's no. I'm the CEO. You're the employee. Do what I say. Um, yeah. well, people definitely don't re react well to that and unfortunately there are, there are still companies that operate that way <laughs> yeah I'm sure there are and maybe there are some environments where it, where it works I haven't found one in my experience you know, earlier on when I was waving it was one of the supervisors walking past my office and they waved to me um, I think that's great you know, I yeah. think <laughs> if, they, if they walked past put their head down and didn't want to make eye contact with me I'd be thinking oh my god yeah, I've got done then. something wrong. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to share something with you I've actually not shared with too many people. Um, you know, my, my wife is quite ill at the moment, and I felt an obligation to tell my entire team a little bit about it, even though my own personal feeling was you know, not to share anything. And why did I do that? Because I didn't want anyone you know, perhaps seeing me on an up or down moment thinking that it related to the company or related to them, that they maybe had enough information to think, you know, Alan's going through something with his wife at the moment and her health, and that's more likely why he's having a, a bad moment or a bad day rather than he's mad at me or, you know, they, you know so I, I think it, 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 it's an example of the kind of company we want to be that um, we, we take into account each other's issues that's going on in our lives and, and you know, we're more effective as a result. Um, people give a lot more, I give a lot more uh, to our company when you know that that group is, is kind of a with you without being in your face about it. Um, people are willing to give more and yes, there'll always be the one or 2% or whatever who will abuse it and find loopholes in it, but let's not make our policies and our behaviors um, and our culture to match the 1% that screw the system. Let's yeah. let's let's create it for the 99 percent who really do come in here and care well, th well thank you for sharing that i hope, I hope your your wife gets well soon thank you I appreciate you sharing that um one of the things i want to ask you as well is is hr has always had this um this uh i don't say gray area of measurement you know how do you measure the success of hr in a, in a in a business, and it's something which is getting a lot easier now. Because we know with the with the uh, now we're introducing a lot of analytics in, into HR, which is great. So now we are getting to a point where we can measure performance. Yes. Yes. Uh, but in the past, it certainly wasn't the case. And I was just wondering, how do you measure the success of your of your HR um, director or your your vice president of HR and the function yes. itself? What does success yeah. mean? I mean, like each of the major departments, there are, there are sort of major leading KPIs that, that give you an indicator that the department's going in the right direction, therefore the company's going in the right direction. And then there are more granular ones that come down, which are the real test of, of you know, did it do its job? You know, when we were hiring something, how many days did it take to, to, to hire? How many candidates did we get to select from? How many times did we have an open position? Did we have uh, diversity candidates available to us? Uh, within the time scale, um, so those are those are ways in which to check it. You know, there's the accuracy of um, the, the the payrolls and bonus calculations and payments. There's clarity of communication, which we check with um, an, an an annual um, survey, uh, and it's it's annual, but there's a mini one one year and a maxi one every two years. The mini one is just a, a check: Are we making progress? These are the major actions that HR decided to work on. Are we making progress on those? Um, but I also like to look outside. Um, I think the best indicators of a company's performance are often coming from things that we as the leaders don't measure. And I know you're very well aware of, of the Glassdoor uh, website. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we, we are interested in Glassdoor because um, it allows us to actually point to it to our customers as well. Um, a customer recently, uh, and quite often, will ask me, what's the difference between you and um, competitor X or competitor Y? And actually, now, one of the first things I do is say, go to Glassdoor. Yeah. Um, and, and do you want to work with a company whose team feels the way my team feel about us? And therefore, by extension, 
about you, our customer, mm-hmm. or do you want to work for a company whose you know, team members perhaps don't think the company is so great? Yeah. Um, so I don't talk at CEO level when I'm asked that. I don't talk about the technical differences in the product or our ability to service the product or our warranties or anything that they might think I'm ready to talk about. I say, you know, you want to go and have a look at what the people think. Yeah, don't um, take my word for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go and see. So um, one of the ways I do therefore measure HR is not the Glassdoor rating itself, but how many people are interacting with Glassdoor. You know, how many of our uh, people that were hiring and recruiting refer to Glassdoor um, and that they used it. How many of our own team members um, or former team members actually post on Glassdoor? How many of my leaders, you know, actually post on Glassdoor as as um, team members rather than you know the leader? I, I've posted a, a review of my own company on Glassdoor, um, <laughs> and, and I knew the question that says, you know, uh, how would you rate the CEO? Oh, oh, yeah. What did you do for that? Because that's one of the questions, right? <laughs> yeah, five out of five. He's an amazing <laughs> CEO. Um, that's amazing, and but, it's, cool. um, it's also good for you as well because you have your own rating, don't you? Yeah, oh, go up, yes. on, on, on Glassdoor, you have your yeah. own lead, your leadership range. Yeah. That must and be it, interesting. <laughs> and, the, and I think they're going to introduce that for more leaders going forward. I think they oh, find they're it. Gonna it's, they're going to niche it down. Yeah, I, I heard that they're going to have more leaders That's being rated. That's going to be cool. Well. But it is a good thing. I mean, again, it's great. Um, I, I, you can't you can't rig it, right? Or some people yeah, try <laughs> to rig I, it. But. <laughs> I don't know if you can rig it or not, but I'm I, I, I'm not interested in in even <laughs> contemplating. I just I, I I'd be frustrated it's if I learned that, you know yeah. we were rigging it in some way because um, it, it's a great tool. And and again, credit to my HR guy, he personally responds to every post on Glassdoor. Wow. Within a few days. And, and, and they might be negative, you know, it might be saying, oh, this problem never gets resolved at Sage because, you know, we have problems. It's the feedback you uh, need though, right? Yeah. And he will go on and say, you know, right. have you I exhausted? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, th- that's another way, the external measure. And then you've got these, you know, the, the results of internal surveying and so on. What's the morale like? What's our succession plan look like? That's one of the indicators I use for HR. So, you know, I've, we might be great at recruiting individual roles. But every year we look at the succession plan within the organization. And if I don't have two or three possible successors that are, that are capable of moving into other roles within a, a zero to three year time scale, HR is failing mm-hmm. because we're hiring people for existing jobs rather than their potential for the future. Um, diversity, if the diversity number is not moving, um, there is no reason why we should not be at 50-50 uh, male to female. There's no reason that we shouldn't totally reflect uh, the cultural diversity in the communities in which we operate. So settling for, hey, aren't we wonderful? We're at 28% female in our organization. Well, you know, the last time I checked, the planet was populated by almost 50% women. So we've still got a long way to go, guys. Let's not celebrate yet. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the kind of thinking um, and the, the way that um, I measure. And then I'm measuring on their contribution at senior leadership. Of course. Um, yeah. And you know, when we're looking at entering you know, new countries or, or maybe starting a new facility, and HR has a massive role to play in the selection of a site for a facility, the selection of the country in which we operate. It can have a massive impact yeah. in our yeah. operating costs going forward, positive or negative. It can have a massive impact on our, uh, the way we are perceived as a company. Um, you know, we, we make a, a premium product um, for the glass industry. Um, uh, you know, so where we make it and the way the factories uh, that we make it look, um, we, we see them as showrooms. We bring people all of the time uh, to, to see inside the factories and therefore they're, they're encountering our people. And if they don't get that positive experience and think, you know, I'm going to pay a, quite a lot of money for this glass. I, I really want to know these people care a I lot like about it. Yeah, you'd think that pe- you'd think um, you know no one would really care. I'm buying a bit. Who's the glass? Who cares where it comes from? But now things have dramatically changed. You you can only people spend their money with companies that they know, like and trust. Um, and and if they also have an amazing product, then it's fantastic too. But certainly, I I'm the same. I, I tr- there's companies that I love, and I'll just 
buy products from them, even if it is more expensive in some cases, because I really love their values and I love, yeah. I love what, what they do. And a lot of our customers tell me the same thing. They say, Chris, the reason we work with HRD leaders rather than some of the big global HR solution violence is that we know you and we know yes. Shane yes. and, we, and we, we buy into you and you're going to work with us and you're going to deliver on it. And I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, I was very surprised on that when we started, but it makes perfect sense. It does make sense. When you boil it all down at the end of the day, it's a person interacting with a person, um, no matter how big the company gets. And you need that You need that trust. It needs to be proven. And that's why I think values are so important. Goals and targets are annual. Values are permanent. Um, and they shouldn't be something that need reviewed. You know, I, I remember having a discussion three or four years ago with one of the team members, and they said, well, it's time to change the values because the values are in all the meeting rooms, they're on plaques, they're, you know, they're in all of our screensavers and so on. And he said, we've never reviewed those values. I said, well, we, we, we can do that. But honestly, if we end up changing those values, I will be very, very surprised. And I'll be disappointed because are we saying people don't come first anymore? Yeah, they yeah. actually come third. People um, think you've got to change it. That's not the pro- that's not the problem. Yeah, we should <laughs> definitely change the goals and targets. We should definitely change the expectations. But they're all our- driven by the values, right? And yeah, the say- values guide us. Mm. And I think you're right. More and more people want to look at the company and their values, and they may well be willing to pay more. And as we said at the outset, you know, no one no one buys a car or buys a home based on what kind of glasses in their building. Uh, they never think about it. But yeah. maybe. Maybe they're about to. I, I did. When I found out about your product, the first thing I said to you was like, wow, how can I get that in my house? <laughs> I want to connect. I've never said that about glass in my entire life. <laughs> so. <laughs> Some cool. We want yeah. people saying, I, I want sage glass rather than, and it might well be that by that time, you know, you've got five or six different alternative suppliers um, and, and they don't actually mind which supplier they have but they refer to it as sage glass uh, because they see us as the value with the brand. You know, many years ago, we, we all used to refer to vacuum cleaners as Hoover's. And you know, now I think that you know, we, we might call them Dyson's if we call them anything. It's true, it's now it's switched to Dyson, hasn't it? Yeah, oh, Dyson, get is, the Dyson. When oh, I, I, I completely was, forgot that the company was called Hoover. Yes. You just thought that that was the way it was called, right? <laughs> they've, done, they've, done so, they've done so well with it. <laughs> you didn't even realize. I do enjoy it, you know, you should never, uh, <laughs> All CEOs have a, a tough and challenging job, um, and, and, and I'm very pleased uh, that other companies are bringing this type of product to the market. So although uh, they might be my competitors... Competition's I, good. Competition's yeah, competition good. is good, but I do like it when I learn that you know, someone's referring to my competitor's product as Sage Glass. That's uh, amazing, yeah. That's because we were first to the marketplace <laughs> and, uh, and were the... Were, well, the innovator. If you can get uh, that brand, if you can get that brand in, that's priceless. If I get a little chuckle when that happens. Nice. Well, look, I'm conscious of time, so one of the questions I wanted to ask you, and it's, it's a bit of an awkward one, then, but I really wanted okay. to ask it is, you know, if you've sacked a HR director in the past or a HR leader, what drove the decision? Because it's very important yeah. to get that perspective from from the CEO. Yeah, I, sadly, I have. Oh, you have. Um, okay. I have. Yeah, only one, um, and um, like any termination, you know, it should be after multiple attempts to solve issues and problems, multiple communication. Now, whether or not, in this case, the individual or anyone else I've been involved in terminating would agree that we've done that is their personal opinion. But I want myself and my managers and my HR team to really go through a very, very robust process that gives people multiple attempts to resolve the issues, be clear about what the issues are. Fundamentally, in this case, it comes back to those three points I said I'm looking for. Um, the person had lost credibility. Um, there were too many basics that were not happening. I think the role was um, was uh, too pressurizing for them, um, that they'd certainly performed. They had a, a good track record in larger organizations where perhaps they had larger teams. They were not creating anything. They were maintaining something, and they had done well. Um, they were excited uh, by the challenge of creating something, you know, starting afresh, not, not with all the policies and procedures of a larger organization, but being able to stamp what they, they, they saw on HR, and they were terrible at it. Uh, it was too much. Um, they, they wanted to fall back constantly on, on you know, what, they, what they knew without trying to create something different, and they lost the credibility. Um, there was no integrity issue. 
uh, but the people just didn't believe. The people at uh, all levels just didn't believe that things were going to be executed, that if they took issues to HR, um, that they, they would never be resolved. And it wasn't a case that the person didn't care. It was just that they felt in some way overloaded. Um, they couldn't prioritize well. They weren't used to having so many issues. Um, and it is a, is a theme we hear a lot when people join Sage. I've heard that a lot as well, by the way. Yeah, I think a lot you know, of people that go from a large organization to a startup or a sm small to medium sized company, they don't have all those resources. They don't have the huge budgets. They don't have all of the you know all of the team members, and they have to be more creative in how, yes. in how they uh, deliver results, but with a smaller team, a smaller budget, etc. Um, I've, I've even seen that in my own business. I actually experienced that slightly when I moved from a, a big team of sales director of twenty people to a brand right. new company with a small team of three or four, and I'm having yes. to then with hardly any budget or any resources and I was like wow and it was very stressful yeah. luckily I came through it and I loved the challenge but I can imagine not everyone is up for that challenge and yeah. uh, going through that and then that's fine um, yes. so I really appreciate you sharing that actually it's, it's very important no for people to no hear problem. that so well, well thank you very much for being a guest I really appreciate you taking time to join us before we thank before you. we wrap up you know if there's one piece of guidance that you could give to HR leaders out there or, or advice what would that be um, you know, my, my normal uh, terrible Scottish humour answer and that is don't go into HR, <laughs> you know, go, into, go into another part of the business. Um, but in all seriousness, I think HR managers should understand the business. They shouldn't see it as a standalone, unconnected role that all they're doing is, is interacting with people, hiring them, firing them, training them. They've got to understand the business, understand where the business is going, understand its strategy, understand globally you know where it might be moving into um, any aspect of its growth and i i want the hr leader here to be intimately involved in five-year planning um, so that they see where the business is going and they contribute to where it's going so my guidance to hr is don't be a standalone support service be integral to the business and understand the business uh, so that you can then be proactive in the contributions that you can make um, and, and, and people then don't become a reason why the business doesn't grow and change. Fantastic. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to join us. I'm so excited to share this episode with our members. Um, <laughs> guys, well, make sure you... expect you to get 150 views. <laughs> oh, that's, if I don't get that, then there's something going really wrong. <laughs> no problem. Look, guys, head over to hrleaders.com. There you'll find all of the show notes on episode. Everything we've been talking about will be linked on our website, uh, as always. Um, Alan, again, thank you for joining us. And um, I wish thank you all the best until we next speak. Yeah, thank you again, sir. Bye. <laughs>